Welcome to the String Joe Show. I am Ryan. I'm going to give you a situation here that's going to sound hypothetical, but it's very real to me because it resembles the first time that I specced out a custom guitar a number of years ago. So you've saved up the money and you're ready to pull the trigger on this custom guitar. You know the color you want, you know the wood selection, the hardware, the pickups. However, as you're specking, the luthier asks you about fingerboard radius and you freeze. Do you know which radius is right for you? Let's explore some of the most used sizes and why one might lean in one direction over the other. First off, what is fingerboard radius? I have this neck here from Fidelity Guitars, and you'll notice that the back, there's a very nice curve here, but there's actually one on the top as well. It's just a little bit more slight. And the radius is the curvature of the fingerboard across the neck and is often described by a number. In the US, we typically measure radius in inches. Typical sizes are 7.25 inches, 9.5, 10, 12, all the way up to 16 inches. And the way we get to this is by completing the circle that the fingerboard starts. The radius is a straight line center to the circumference of a circle. The higher the number, the flatter the radius of the fingerboard is. You might be looking at your hands at this point and wondering if that is a factor. And it's actually not that simple. Your radius preference has more to do with your playing style than anything else. Vintage Fenders used a 7.25 radius, give it a very natural and relaxed feel. Because of the pronounced curvature of the board, you can easily play chords. Also, if you're a thumb wrapper, like I am, 7.25 is great. Vintage Gibsons from the same period used a 12 inch radius. This would be a much flatter radius than the 7.25 of the Vintage Fenders. This works better for soloing and lead playing as you have a more even response across the whole fretboard. To go a step further, the speed friendly guitars of the 80s, you know, the shredder guitars, used a radius of 16 inches. Again, this puts your playing focus on the soloing and riffing. The even response makes it much easier to fly across the board quickly while you're sweep picking or economy picking or tapping or whatever. Some modern builders offer a compound radius. This is not one, but let's just imagine. You can kind of have the best of both worlds. So imagine this was a 12 inch radius down by the nut, and that's where you do your cording, and that transitions all the way to a 16 inch radius by the heel, and that's where you can let loose and go crazy. So let's take a look at some well-known players and see what they have used. Hendrix, you can't talk about electric guitar without mentioning Jimi Hendrix. Because of what Fender was producing at the time, Jimmy Strout would have been in the 7.25 range. Jimmy was also a big thumb rapper. Being in a trio, he had to cover leads, but also comping his own solos rhythmically. The modern recreations of the Hendrix Strats are a comfortable 9.5 inch radius. Ingve Malmsteen also started with vintage Strats that were 7.25 inch on the radius, and he ended up moving to a more speedy 9.5. Wes Montgomery, the godfather of jazz guitar, and a very quick and dynamic player, used a 12-inch radius on his L5. Eddie Van Halen's Frankenstein had a 10-inch radius, but the newer recreations of that guitar, as well as the Wolfgang, use a compound 12 to 16-inch radius. In modern guitar building, 9.5 to 12 inches seems to be the standard for fingerboard radius right now. Personally, I have guitars that are all over the map as far as radios goes that I use them for different applications. But my daily drivers tend to have a 10 inch radius. And if you're simply not sure what is right for you, that's a good middle ground to start on. If you know your preferred radius, comment below, but also tell me what kind of guitar you play and what kind of music you play, but we'll see a pattern. We buy a lot of things online these days. We don't necessarily get to try them out. And so if you know your fretboard radius, you can get a good idea of how a guitar is going to feel without having ever even touched it. So thanks for spending time with me today on the String Joy Show. There's tons of information here on the channel, as well as on our mailing list. So please subscribe, like, comment. We always want to hear from you. 
I'm off. See you when I see you. Thank you.